All right, the last thing that I want to talk about in this chapter is Blender's skeletal animation and rigging system. I'm just going to give you enough to get up and going. Uh, you know, this is not a detailed tutorial on exactly how to rig a character or anything like that. I just want to give you enough info to take your experience from other applications to then apply that to Blender for doing rigging and skeletal animation. So using this base mesh that I have here, I'm simply going to hit Shift A, choose Armature, and add a single bone. With a bone object or skeleton object or you know, armature, as it's called in Blender, we then have object mode, edit mode, and pose mode. Edit mode is where we're actually going to create our individual bones, uh, and then pose mode is where we'll apply any kind of constraints, such as an IK solver, or actually animate the skeleton itself. Uh, if we then just go ahead and go into edit mode, which by the way, you can do by just hitting tab, or if you want to switch into pose mode, you can hit control tab. So going back to edit mode, Let's just select this. You can see that we can select the, the root, the whole bone, or the tip of the bone. We have all of our various tools over here, such as you know our normal transform, uh, adding, duplicating, or deleting bones, extruding, or subdividing. In this case, let's just create a very, very basic one. So I'm just going to pull this down here. This could be our root bone. And I'm not going to create any kind of functional rig here. Uh, it's merely going to be for demonstration purposes. And so, you know, we're just going to take a rig or a chain straight up and then maybe a chain out for each of the arms just to showcase the system. So we have our root bone. Then I could go ahead and select this and I hit Shift D, which will duplicate it and then rotate it around, move it over. And then I might just go ahead and rotate this down, move it up for the hips extrude this tip down. And so extruding is just with E. Then maybe I would duplicate this bone, bring it back around here, you know, here to some sense of a rig. And maybe I'll extrude this, extrude again. If you want to change your display mode, since this may be difficult to see, you can go over to your armature properties and we have several different display types here, uh, namely X-ray, allowing us to then just see it directly through our model. And we'll just take that up like so. Okay, so this, you know, very, very, very basic, non-functional so far, but putting in the basic system. If I wanted to then extrude out for the limbs, I can select the, the node here and then enable this option for X-axis mirror. If I then extrude, you notice nothing changes. But if I hit Shift E, which you'll find is not listed anywhere here, but is actually a mirrored extrude, and you can probably find it, uh, if you go in here and say extrude forked, so you hit spacebar to bring up the search menu, type in extrude, and you can see extrude forked. And shifty basically will just give you a mirrored extrude such that Blender now recognizes these two bones as mirrors of each other. And now if I select this and extrude out, it will do the same adjustments on the, you know, the twin on the other side. So I'll just extrude these and that gives me my mirrored system. This is our basic rig, you know, creating the bones, fairly simple, it's just extrude, uh, duplicate. If we want to add a new bone, uh, we can simply position the 3D cursor where we want it, hit Shift A, it will just automatically add in that bone. If you wish to name your bones, uh, simply select the bone, and in the bone panel here, you can then name the bone any way you wish. You can put it on its own individual bone layer and you can set your, your parent settings, you know, such as the parent of the bone, whether it's connected, inheriting rotation or scale, and then set actual deformed settings, such as A, is it a deformed bone, set the envelope, set curved bones, radius, and so on. In the display panel, if you're using curved bones or envelopes, then you'll want to set it over to either B bones for curved bones. And you can see this here, if we set this then up to segments on this bone, then when we go into object mode, it immediately you know, curves out between the two. So setting this back though to one and switching over. Envelopes then allows us to set a radius here where if you select the individual bone, you can then scale this up. If you select the center, scale it, it'll do that. Uh, and you know, this can then, we can use these later for applying weights if we wish. Um, the envelopes are not great in Blender, but they can get the job done if you just need it very, very quickly. If you need to reset the roll on a bone, you can simply select the bone, hit Control N, and then you can recalculate the roll any way that you need. You can also set it from the bone panel under Roll 
right here. For the time being, I'm not going to worry about it. So we have our basic rig created, but you know something that we might want to do is we might want to parent this to this, and we might want to parent all of this over to the root bone. So if I select, say, this bone, which is acting as my hips, although I'm not going to, well, I'll just name this one, so I can find it there. Or you can also find it from the In Properties panel. You can also find these same basic settings right in here, along with then uh, the actual bone name here in the Item panel. And so if I want to parent this, there's a couple different ways you can do it. First of all, you can find it right here under Parent, and then just choose the bone that you wish. Or if you don't want to, you know, fight through a list of the different bones, you can simply select it, select the next one, and then Control P, and either set the parent as connected or to keep the offset. In this case, I'm just going to keep the offset. And then I will go ahead and actually, you know, I'm going to Alt P because I want to clear that parent. And then I can select both of these and I will parent both of them then to the root. So I'll hit Control P, set the parent, keep it with an offset. And now those two are parented to that. If I hit tab to go into object mode, we can see our rig. We can modify it as a single bone or as a single object. And then I can hit control tab and I can go into pose mode. Within pose mode, we have um, all of these settings maintain the same, but we can then, if we want to group any bones, we can add our various groups here to which then we can assign uh, various colors that are pre-made or you can set your own individual colors. And you, if you just uh, select the bone, you can then click assign or remove. So let's just grab say this color set here, click assign, and now you can see it's been assigned to that group. We'll just remove it. Don't worry about it for the time being. Uh, we do have individual bone layers, so we can set our different layers here. If you select the bone, hit M, you can then move it to any one of those individual layers, and then you can also protect any one of those individual layers if you wish. All right, so that's, that's that. If you know, We can see that if we select these, they're following parents, etc., cetera, whatnot. Uh, if we say go in here, select this bone, if you want to very quickly disable like inheriting rotation or something like that, you can go over to the bone settings and then in disable inherit rotation. And now it will no longer uh, inherit said rotation. So very, very quick. Uh, you can do that for rotation, scale, or location. If you want to add in constraints, or actually, you know what, real quick, before we get to constraints, let's just show how to parent this to the model. So if we hit leave pose mode, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One way you could do it is by adding in simply a, an armature modifier and then setting that modifier to your armature here and then using either bone envelopes, which we're not going to do, or vertex groups. With vertex groups, you can then go over to the object data and add in all of the groups and name them exactly like the bones to then start assigning them. That's obviously way too tedious. So we're gonna do it the automatic way. If we just remove the armature, we can make sure our mesh is selected, hold down shift, select our armature, and then hit control P, and that will bring up our parent menu again. And this time we can choose armature deform. And then we can choose that with either empty groups, so to create all the vertex groups, but don't assign any weights, with envelope weights or with automatic weights. And we're just gonna choose automatic weights. We can see then, uh, oh, I missed deleting my original armature modifier, so we'll just delete that. You can see then it's added in a new armature modifier, uh, assigned it to that armature, and by default, it's still using envelopes, so we'll just disable that. But if we go over to the object data panel, then we can see that it's gone in and added all of those vertex groups for us. If we hit control tab to go into pose mode, or excuse me, weight paint mode on our model, uh, we can then see each one of the, the weights. So selecting any one of these bones will give us the weights there. We have a series of brushes here for you know darkening, drawing, lightning, mixing, multiplying, adding, you name it. Uh, our weights, radius, strength tools. We've got stroke settings, curve settings, and then various weight tools for normalizing, mirroring, inverting, cleaning, so forth. Um, if you want to, you can also hit tab to go into edit mode and then you can select any one of the vertices that you wish to assign to your group and then assign them or remove them, select them or deselect them, and you can assign or remove based on this weight here. So if I set my weight down to 0.7 and click assign, it will assign these vertices to this weight, or excuse me, to this group with this weight. 
Doing it one more thing though in pose mode, or if we go back into object mode, if you want to be able to modify your rig at the same time as the weights to kind of see how your weights are working, if you first select your rig, go into pose mode, then select your model, go into weight paint mode, you can then go in and actually select those bones at the same time. So, you know, this might be a good idea to actually uh, put x-ray back on, but this allows you to work on either one quite easily and kind of see what that's doing. So again, uh, since it's not very straightforward, if you select your rig, go into pose mode, then select your model, switch it into weight paint mode, you can then actually modify your rig while you're weight painting very, very easily. And by selecting any one of the bones, that will also select the appropriate group here in the vertex group panel such that you don't have to worry about, you know, digging through and finding the correct group. All right, the last thing that I wanna talk about real quick here, um, just to get you up and going, is how to assign constraints. So for example, if I wanted to add an IK constraint to this, although I'll do this properly, and let me just extrude another bone here, and then I'm going to select both of these, and I'm gonna hit Alt-P, and then clear that parent, or even I can just disconnect the bone, and I'll use that as my IK target. Uh, I can then go over to, say, this bone here. I wanna add an IK to the arm. So I'll go to the Bone Constraints panel. This is different than the normal Constraints panel because it's specific for bones, and I can choose Add Constraint. You can see that we have uh, a lot of different options here as far as available constraints from transform to limita limitations, uh, inverse kinematic, dampening, clamping, child of, floor, so forth. Uh, we've got a lot of different ones. So if we just choose inverse kinematics, we can set our target. This is gonna be our actual armature. That will then enable us to designate a specific bone. We select the bone. We can see that it is bone 0.004 there. So I'm just gonna hover over this. I'm just gonna hit control C to copy that. And then I can select my bone here and control V just paste that right in. That will then set my target. And then I can adjust my iterations. I can set an additional pole target if I want. I can set my chain length from zero on up. In this case, I've got, was it two bones? And then I can set my weighting positions and influence and so forth. Selecting this then, I then have a pretty wonky and terrible uh, IK constraint, but I do have an IK constraint. There we go, much better. So the other way to add an IK constraint that's much quicker is if you first select the bone that you wanna add the constraint to, then select the target and hit Control I, or excuse me, uh, I believe it's Alt I now. Yes, no, Shift I, I'm sorry. If you hit Shift I, you can set the constraint to the active bone and it will add that. Now I had that in reverse order. So if you select the target, then select the bone, hit Shift I, add the IK to the active bone, it will go ahead and add that and fill in all of this for you and then allowing you just to adjust that however you wish. So those are the basic uh, constraints. We've got obviously any number of them that we can add and you can really enjoy my, my, my terrible, terrible rig, but all of the, the tools there uh, are there for you to work with. Now, the one other thing that I wanted to point out that I mentioned in one of the previous videos and let me just pull it up to showcase a little bit more. But in this example file that I showed you, number one, we do have the option for custom bone shapes for creating much more uh, animator friendly rigs. And these can be done simply by selecting the bone in, I believe it's in, no, uh, in pose mode. So in pose mode, under the display section, you can then see a custom bone shape. And this can just be a mesh that you can then create. And in this case, you can actually see all these meshes are added over here on this other layer. So here's all of our various meshes that then uh, represent our different bones, just making it very nice and animator friendly. One other thing that you can do to make things more animator friendly is you can add in custom controls here. Now, I'm not gonna get into this. Uh, it's not my area of expertise at all. But if you are familiar with Python or know someone that is familiar with Python, you can go in and add in custom scripts that then control all of these functions. These custom scripts you'll find are added via the text editor panel. And you can see it's just the rig UI.python. Here is our actual uh, script that Bjorn added for this. 
and why not? And it does all of this. So you can very quickly add extra controls, say for just disabling or hiding any one of these bones to quickly add, you know, if I want to just show the arm uh, FK or whatnot, I can just show those. I can then also select any one of those bones. If once I'm in pose mode, I then have additional controls, such as if I have, you know, if I've set up an IK, FK snapping, then I can set that for FK, IK. I can snap the FK to the IK or the IK to the FK. And so these are additional controls that the rigger has set up that then just give a lot more freedom to the animator. So if you're familiar with Python, you can jump in and do all those fairly quickly. And then he's added in some additional things just to make it easier on the animator, such as automatic keyframe recording. Same thing as down here. The default type of the interpolation modes. Uh, simplify to turn off subdivision surfaces and the levels for those surfaces. And then also just the, the in and the out frame for the playback range. So that's it for Blender's skeletal animation system. Uh, hopefully that's enough to get you up and going with it. Uh, it's, it's pretty functional, gives you a lot of... Uh, a lot of features to work with and should serve most purposes.